Hey everybody, Bob Babbitt here, Challenged Athletes Live. Uh, today is Legends Day. We have Dr. Bob Gailey, who is a mobility coach and professor of physical therapy at the University of Miami. Peter Harsh, mobility coach, owner of Peter Harsh Prosthetics. Travis Ricks, our director of programs at CAF and an above knee amputee. How you guys doing? What's happening in your world? Good morning, Bob. How you doing, Bob? I am spectacular. And, and one of the reasons I want to have you guys on, there is not a more impactful day in our sport. And San Diego Triathlon Challenge is wonderful and spectacular. But going to the, CA, the OSER CAF running clinic that you guys put on for amputees in San Diego, I bring anybody and everybody out there because kids go from Bambi to Carl Lewis in about a minute and a half <laughs> under your guidance. And just seeing these kids who have never run before, learning how to run. Talk a little bit about how the genesis, and maybe for you, Travis, because you're, you're an amputee as well as running the program. Talk about the genesis of the CAF OSER clinics and how impactful they have been for our athletes. I'll let uh, Bob and Peter go first, and then I'll kind of bring in the uh, tell. Okay. Um, Bob, it's, it's great to be on, and uh, it's also – uh, good to bring up the point that Carl Lewis was the first person who broke the 10-second barrier because a lot of people may not remember that uh, he was an Olympic champion, second only to Jesse Lewis, but uh, Jesse Owens, rather. Um, but um, I think what we see with the athletes when they come out is um, they're a little unsure, they don't know what's going to happen. There's lots of folks, and this is probably one of the first times they've been around that many athletes who use a prosthesis like they do. And then all of a sudden, as they take those first hops and skips, and then they start to feel a little bit more confident, and they're running with another physical therapist, and they're hearing the cheers. Hey, I can do this. And I'm surrounded by other people that can do it. And I think the really cool thing is the number of role models that show up to each and every event so that they can see what that next step might be and they can get that encouragement and then they can for my group who are just learning how to run they can see peter's group off to the side and i want to be like those folks so you know you're right it's a genesis it's an evolution that you can see every level from the person showing up for the first time to the person who's been out at kona and done iron man and that's a pretty special place to be so, Peter, from your perspective, as a prosthetist, what, what have you learned from these clinics for, that has helped you in your profession? Well, we have these extraordinary athletes that are very brave that are coming out and learning how to run for the first time. And I'm fortunate enough to get these athletes to have the confidence to utilize their prosthesis, to build a foundation, good technique, and the confidence that, hey, listen, you can be a world-class athlete, a Paralympic athlete. I've lost count, Bob, how many CAF and OSER athletes have come to these mobility run clinics with Dr. Gailey and became Ironman world champions or top marathoners or Paralympic track and field athletes. It's countless. And so it's my experience as a prosthetist is I get the ability to all have – the chance to work with them on the running technique to build that form, but also to give them some tips of how to maintain their prosthesis, look at their overall alignment, um, give them some suggestions of, hey, listen, if you start feeling this, try using a, utilizing a gel pad or additional sock. And in my world, I'm a runner, as you know, and I'm a triathlete. And so I like to share that knowledge. And I've also I've been able to work with their prosthetist. So these athletes that come to the clinic, they're like, well, my prosthetist has never been able to, uh, I'm the first one they ever set up running, uh, pass my number along. And so we're able to share the prosthetic knowledge. And I have countless uh, world-class athletes of all sports that I've learned, hey, here's some tricks that work. Here's some general maintenance. And it makes a huge difference for them to give them the confidence to go and have a lifestyle of running. Healthy body, healthy mind. So, Travis, as an athlete, an amputee athlete yourself, who's done sit volleyball at a high, at a national and world class level, as well as triathlon, paratriathlon, how important are these clinics for an athlete like yourself, and for athletes who are just getting started? 
Yeah, I got to tell you, Bob, you know, I lost my leg in 2003. Um, I know CF and OSER have been doing these clinics uh, long before that. But I just remember going to my first clinic and getting a chance to really learn the small, minute things that help you go big distances, right? I mean, Peter and Bob have been there to kind of teach those, those little like balance drills and those things that you can do at home. They encourage you to keep moving forward and learn how to work with your prosthetics so that eventually you're going to get to the point where you graduate from Bob's group to Peter's group and then eventually go on to do things. I can tell you without a doubt, I wouldn't have gone through the career of, of my triathlon career without the clinic, without the confidence the clinic provided me. Um, I think that it, it's great because it provides other athletes a chance to see people like them going through the same motions, being in the same place. But also, like Bob said, there's another group off to the side working with Peter that are where they want to be. And you have goals to strive for. And you know that it's not impossible to reach those goals when you have a support system like the Mobility Clinic provides. So, Trav, with, uh, obviously with COVID, can't, this year we had to cancel the CFOs or uh, amputee running clinics. Talk a little bit about how you guys have pivoted and, and what are the plans moving forward? Yeah, it's, it, you know, it was not easy uh, working with the OSER team and CAF team to make the decision to uh, cancel these clinics. We know how important they are to people. We do about seven of these and we help over 300 people a year, uh, you know, learn better mobility. And, and that's important. And when you take that away, you're leaving a lot of people kind of just hanging and, and, and you know, they're not getting that support. So, we did cancel knowing it was the right thing to do, the best thing to do, but we are working on, on some offerings that we can do virtually. We've got uh, some stuff online that we're doing and we're, we're trying to get, trying to provide some opportunities for them to work at home. So for all you guys, what does the word mobility mean to you? I think most people look at mobility as, as basic mobility is just getting around the house. But I think mobility is a, a personal definition. Um, if you're an athlete, if you're a person that's used to being able to go out on a daily run for a couple of miles, that's mobility to you. And I think that um, it, it's, again, it is a progression. If somebody is injured and loses a limb, mobility is just being able to walk. But then a lot of people kept turning around through the years and saying, well, what's next? For me, mobility is being able to get back and to do a 10K. It could be to, to run a triathlon. Um, and it really, over the last 10 years, CAF and OSA have been there to help people to get back to the level of mobility that they're looking for. And you know, we talk about the, the clinics. We've done over 70 clinics helping out between three and 400 people a year. That's literally thousands of people who have found the level of mobility that they're looking for whether it's running at the Ironman or going out and playing ball with their kids in the backyard or, or participating in the church softball league. Um, and that's what I think CF is all about. And that's what the clinics are about, getting folks back to that level of mobility that they always wanted to enjoy. So Dr. Bob, uh, during this time when people are isolated and they're at home, as an expert in mobility, what do you think people should be doing, some of our amputees should be doing to make sure one, they don't come back too soon and get injured. And at the same time, they keep themselves moving enough so that when things do loosen up and races come back, they can get back at it. Well, just because you're wearing a prosthesis is no different than you and I sitting at home. Um, we're spending a little too much time uh, maybe watching Netflix and, and um, maybe uh, enjoying baking too much. So um, we all got to stay active. And so uh, the important thing is just a simple program of stretching. Um, unfortunately, when you're wearing a prosthesis, you can eat yourself right out of that prosthesis. So um, if you're fortunate enough to have your everyday, like you're wearing that, but you've got to put your sport leg on. And even if it's just walking around the block or jogging, be safe, um, wear a mask, do all the things you should be doing. Um, but I know that OSER is getting ready to put on a number of uh, videos and that you can go to, to how to start to train at home to get back into shape. Because the issue is the weak link is that skin. And so if you're not keeping the skin, um, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, tough enough to be able to go back to running, it's going to be a problem. And so 
you just want to keep yourself in shape, mind, body, and spirit. And that's what we're all facing. Unfortunately, if you wear a prosthesis to be an athlete, it's just a little bit more difficult, but there's a lot of people here to help you out. Uh, Peter, really along those same lines, you're dealing with, with athletes who are coming in to see you who are not able to go do the races they want to do. Talk a little bit about what your message is to them, because I know you're concerned on skin care as well. Yeah, I'm starting to see a lot right now. People have been down for several months, and I cannot tell you how busy we are with athletes of all levels coming in. Um, the number one thing I try to get across to them is anything they're doing is not a waste, that they need to start getting consistent again. You know, the consistency in your prosthesis, the consistency with your weight, your nutrition, your hydration is absolutely critical. How I like to start them off is just giving them a little bit of an idea like, hey, listen, if you're up out of that interface and, and, and uh, uh, you're not fitting in there correctly because you gained a little bit of weight, you have to kind of really pay attention to your diet, maybe wearing your liner at night before you get into your sport leg. Um, and really what I try to get across to them is that we want to start off very, very, very slow and easy. I like to get them to open up their, their shoulders, do some arm rotations. I like to get them single leg bouncing. So I have them get to a wall or if they're out at a track, get a hurdle and just kind of sit there and kind of bounce nice and easy on that, doing some stretching, getting the hydration. I like to have them do some short skips, um, but really the consistency of getting back will be really critical. The other thing that I like to do is I like to get them running in place to try to get that cadence going again. Because right now, what I see on my uh, treadmills and what I see out at the track with the athletes that haven't been going, and again, all levels, is that they don't have that cadence. So I want to get them back light on their feet instead of running really clunky because we don't want those heavy, hard ground reaction forces. So I get across to them, run in place, high knees run a minute, walk a minute, because we want to build that bone density again. We want to build that muscle strength. We want to build that flexibility back in so we can achieve the good range of motion of biomechanics of running. And again, I'm telling them, you're looking at six to eight weeks of very, very easy level ground running. That's it. One of the things you, we were chatting about the other day is the, the value of walking. And a lot of times people feel like, oh my God, I'm walking, I don't want to do that. But you want to your guys to start out walking before they're running. Yeah, you know, Bob, I'll say this is, um, and there's evidence now to support this. Um, if you want to maintain your health, regardless of your level of fitness, get a dog, go to the local uh, rescue. And if you have to get up and go walk the dog, just don't take it for a walk around the block, go two, three miles. And I think that you'll have that build up your endurance as peter has said within that limb you'll be able to maintain it and you're going to have a pal with you at all times COVID or not they'll be there for you so um and there's actually evidence to suggest that people with uh with dogs are healthier today so that's one solution but to your point walking is just as important as as physical fitness in, in more strenuous conditions so so uh Dr. Bob, is there a moment or two, and again, we're talking hundreds, uh, thousands of athletes who've gone through your programs. Is there an athlete or two or a story or two that, that sticks out to you from the uh, OSER CAF clinics over the years? Yeah, you know, it, it's, I think it comes at the very end where we have what we term the grand finale or the real end. And this is where um, the athletes get to demonstrate to all the fans that are there to, uh, who have been encouraging them through the morning um, to see uh, what they've learned and what they've accomplished. And I, I think that when you look down at the athletes on that return, because they went up, they hopped, they, uh, they wove, they did all the various things, and they hear the cheers of everybody along the sides, and they look to the side and they're competing against that person, you can see it in their eyes. I'm competitive, I'm an athlete again. And we've had folks who have come to one event and shown up several months or a year later and said, you know what, I lost 40 pounds. And you go, oh my gosh, it was because of this clinic. Or as you know, people have come back and I didn't think I could run, I got a CAF scholarship, 
and now I'm getting ready for the Paralympics, or they were moving on to uh, running on, uh, in their community uh, the weekend races. Uh, there was a young woman who attended one of our clinics, and she said, because of CAF, OSER, and these clinics, uh, I'm now running my 20th 10K inside of one year. And I was like, oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding. So uh, these are the stories that you just love to hear. And so when everybody hugs and kisses at the end of the day, um, the best part is knowing that folks are going to take a little bit home with them and we made a small impact in their lives. Peter, for you, uh, is there a moment or two that sticks out for you from all, all the, all the uh, CAFOs or clinics? There are countless, Bob, uh, thousands and thousands of athletes we've helped. I think of all the kids that come over from the kids group that start running and learning the technique that next thing you know, they're doing extraordinary times and off to the Paralympics to the regulars that come every year. Uh, and they're, we're building a lifestyle for so many people, a, a lifestyle of, yes, I can do this. And... You know, I, I guess I should tell that just one of the stories of one of my military uh, Naval Academy grads, Eric McIlvaney. You know, he lost his leg in Afghanistan and he came out to the CAF clinic and I had just set up a run leg and he went out there and he ran. Uh, I worked with him. Long story short, he ended up going and competing at the Ironman World Championships and just that athlete, I was competing at Ironman Canada in 2015, Bob. I got off the bike second out of 500 in my age group. I got out onto the run mile three, and there's Eric missing a leg with the elite athletes in their 30s and 40s up front running top 15 in Ironman in his age group as an amputee. That's one of those moments like, wow, we're really helping people get back to, to mobility and lifestyle. That's the drop the mic moment, Peter. That's pretty classic. It's kind of like your classic story talking about Paul Martin at the Ironman World Championships in the early 2000s. It's just like, wow, this is extraordinary. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a blessing to be a part of the journey of all these athletes and to see their, how it changes their lives. Travis, uh, moving forward, what are the plans for the clinics for next year? Are you already looking at, at potential locations? We haven't really talked about the locations. I think that uh, we had some great cities set up this uh, last year, and, and I think we're going to want to try to probably hit those. Um, you know, we, we try to seek out the biggest cities where we can get the most people to come into. Um, but I, I think whatever we do with OSER, it's going to be impactful. Uh, we're going to make sure that we come at this thing in a bigger way because um, we know people want it. We know people need it. And uh, we're, we're just going to be there for them. We've got two of the most amazing coaches in the world to be able to provide the instruction. So uh, I know that people are hungry for it and we're gonna, we're gonna make sure they get it. Hey guys, first of all, thank you so much for taking time to chat and I, I am your biggest fan. Uh, I love coming out to the uh, OSER CAF running clinics. I see lives changed and every time I bring somebody out there, they become a supporter and they become a fan. So thank you for everything you're doing to make OSER great, to make CAF great. You guys are very, very special. Thanks for well, taking time to be on Challenge Athletes Live, guys. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Bob.